Welcome back to the T. Davidson YouTube channel. The second ever edition of Walk Off Wednesday is coming to you guys. Our, you know, our, it's our baseball show on T. Davidson here a little bit. We're trying to pick up our baseball coverage a little bit. Um, you'll see all sorts of baseball coverage on the website mainly for us, and we're kind of spanning it over to the YouTube a little bit. We're getting there on the Twitter as well. Just in general, more baseball coming your way. It's the only major sport going on over the next two months anyway, so you'll definitely know where to get your fix now, and that's right here at TWSN. Now, we talked about last week, we talked a little bit about everybody. Literally touched on every team a little bit. Got a little bit more of a different topics today, but, you know, there's some people that always just deserve to be talked about a little bit, and we're going to talk kind of start things off with the Yankees and the Astros. We know we kind of saw that crazy series they had last week. And what we're going to be talking about first is, did the Astros kind of expose the Yankees a little bit? We saw, I know the series was a split, but we saw the, the Astros pitching dominate the Yankees for most of the series. I mean, it got up to, what, 16 no-hit innings? Like, I don't know. Whoever wants to start us off, do we think it exposed the Yankees a little bit? I'll let you start off, Logan. You go for it. Yeah. Um. So um, this this was a series that was, I think, potentially another preview of the ALCS. And I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say definitely that the Yankees and Astros, that 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 the Astros, they definitely exposed the Yankees um this past weekend. I mean, the first game, like, I mean, just look about what happened. I mean, the Yankees, they were down, like they were shut out in the first game of the series, I believe. Yeah, and they were, and um. And I was like, wow, like the Astros, I mean, they're, they're bringing up a fight, especially when they're coming back, to, when they're coming to the Bronx. Of course, the, the Yankees fans have all that animosity towards Astros because of the science ceiling. And um, they were just dominating in, in that first in, in that first game on that Thursday. And then all of a sudden, and then, then the Yankees, they just rallied and came back. So that was impressive. But let's talk about the other two games. I mean, on Friday, on the Friday game, the Astros, I mean, they were, um, Verlander was just, having a field day, like just pitching wonderful and it, for a three one win. And then of course then on Saturday, they just got no hit. And it was a combined no hitter. Three nothing. Like no I, especially with, with with the great offense like the Yankees, no one saw that coming at all. And then they kinda got no hit on Sunday but until the seventh and then until they won the game six to three. And then of course it was Aaron Judge, but you gotta look at this. I mean, for the Yankees the team that's been to the ALCS the past four straight years, no, it's been the Astros. I mean, everyone's already crowned the Yankees as the team to beat in the American League. But let's not forget about the Astros. I mean, the Astros, they, have, they got a veteran manager, great starting pitching, and they still have Altuve and Bregman on their team. And I think you can't overlook the Astros as, as potentially getting back to this third World Series in four years. So, yeah, I think the Yankees, they, they're definitely going to get exposed because they have been playing some some not, not so great teams as of, as of late until this Astros series. So, yeah, I think they definitely did. Matt? See, I'm going to disagree. I don't think the Astros expose them because I think the Astros are the only team that could do this to the and That's uh, That's kind of what I was going to get at a little bit. Like, I think the, I think, you know, I agree with you that this is probably the potential ALCS. These are the two best teams in the American League, in my opinion. And Astros just kind of own the Yankees a little bit. Like, regardless what happened with the sign stealing stuff. Like, the Astros have played the New York Yankees extremely well over the last couple seasons. And when are Yankee fans going to learn to stop booing Jose Altuve? Like, <laughs> they boo him and this dude hits a home run. Like, it's honestly kind of ridiculous what, what Altuve does to, to, to the New York Yankees. But, you know, to go back to the question, like, I don't think they expose them because, like, any other team, I think the Yankees would have beaten them three out of four, maybe swept. I think the Astros are the only team that can do this. And, you know, we kind of touched on it a little bit last week. But, I mean, I think if these teams meet in the playoffs, I think the Astros are going to win. I really do. I do. Like, this Astros team is, is is a bunch of veterans. You know, they have a younger pitching staff other than Verlander. But, like, they're, they've been there. They're experienced. They know how to win. And it's, it's honestly impressive. And, I mean – this is the first time the a Yankees team had been no hit since 2003 against the Astros. Yeah. <laughs> like, like it's actually, yeah. it's kind of weird how things like this happen, but I think the Yankees are fine I th because they still won two of the games. <laughs> yeah, and that just that's kind of crazy. Shows that they're resilient. Like, yeah. uh, like this Yankees team is resilient. You have to put them away. You can't let up even one pitch against this team. Otherwise they will take advantage. The, the thing for me, I don't know if it's, 
exposed is necessarily the right word. I think the outer shirts give you a decent like recipe on how you could hang in there with the Yankees. But just like just like you just said, I mean, two out of four, and we're talking about did the Astros just expose the Yankees? And this Yankees team is just playing on a completely different planet than everybody right now. Um, and that's all the credit in the world to them. But I think obviously teams will look at what the Astros did and try to mimic it. But at the end of the day, it it's not that easy. You know, it's it's gonna take near perfect pitching, like the Astros nearly did several times in the series. Literally no hitter, another almost no hitter. That didn't even Verlander's master class of a performance. Like what they did in that whole series was just which is amazing. Uh, my only real takeaway from it is that I hope we get a seven game series of it. <laughs> like that's, that's about it. Like it was a phenomenal four game set. The Astros obviously felt like they were in command of every single game, you know, but the Yankees still pulled out two of the four. Like it's just amazing what the Yankees are doing right now. Um, like I said, expose, maybe not the word. I think teams will try to kind of mimic how the Astros attacked the Yankees hitters a little bit. But again, it's not that easy at all, you know. If so if you're the Yankees, so my question is: is if you're the Yankees, right? Like you're playing at home, you had to come back in the ninth inning two times against this Astros team. It's mm-hmm. no guarantee that's going to happen every time. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, the Astros can... might have swept the Yankees four games in the Bronx. They should have. They should have. I think for the Yankees, it might be concerning. But for other teams, it is, it means nothing because I don't think they can do what the Astros do. Basically, it's. I mean, it's, it's it's one of those things with the Yankees. We talked about it a little bit last week. It's just like the sustainability of what the Yankees are doing is going to be in question. They're going to go on a little bit of a dry spell, whether that's you know lose ten in a row or just you know lose you know, play 500 baseball for a month. Like, it doesn't matter at the end of the day because the Yankees are fine. They're in the playoffs pretty much at this point. It doesn't really matter. But they are going to come back to earth a little bit, and that's when we're going to see how the Yankees are. Are they going to plateau at when they, you know, when they kind of come back down to earth, or are they going to get back up to that that peak? I think that is what's going to be something to watch. For. That's the only thing I'm watching for, for the Yankees at this point in time. Currently, and they're, they're, and they're about to open up a three-game series with the A's. So... You know, I yeah. think if the A's were to go in there and take two or three, right, then maybe we yeah. can have that conversation of did the Astros kind of show something to expose this team? But until something like that happens, like I said, I, it's the Astros. I don't think any other team is capable of doing what the Astros just did. Yeah. We'll just have to wait and see at this point with these teams. Like I said, the only thing I got out of it was I hope we get a seven-game series when it goes to the World Series. That would be phenomenal we're gonna move on over to another team that kind of always in the headlines a little bit we'll be talking about the angels a little bit and not the massive brawl you guys saw with the mariners that was enjoyable you know if you, if you like that kind of stuff you know usually in baseball Free sunflower seeds for the yeah for the when mariners. when you see all over the social media like you have a brawl in baseball it's never really a fight like you know it's more of a benches clearing incident um but this one was wild <laughs> like this is one of the better ones we've had in quite some time i mean yeah. i don't was there one last year I think the harper one still top the harper one still tops me with hunter Strickland. that's the one that still tops me it's the best one of all time i love that one because harper wanted it and he got it but i think that's the best one for me but yeah this one was someone one that you rarely see matt yeah, you got a favorite one, one? <laughs> i think mine might be the the dodgers padres with zach granke oh. like he yeah and because then they played again like a couple of days later out in LA and it was just like animosity between the two sides. This was like in 2014 or something like that. But yeah, we don't get a lot of brawls like this. This I, one looks like people I, are throwing hands. My, I mean, obviously I'm a Reds fan, so we've had some good ones over the years. One of the Cardinals a, Amir Garrett. a few years ago, Amir Garrett several times. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Amir Garrett was letting people have it. So we've been a little bit more, I guess, in Cincinnati of late. But it's, it's, you know, it's not something that's like fun, good for the sport, I would say. But it's what about the what about Pedro Martinez back in the day? There's the been Yankees some wild throwing ones. the Yankees coach uh, Zimmer, I think. Yeah, like, there's down some... to the ground <laughs> that whole brawl. Like, you know, brawls are not fun for for the players involved mm-hmm. and all that because you know someone could get seriously hurt. I think, but they do provide some sense of entertainment. I think though. the issue with brawls more recently, per se, is just the lack of like 
um, enforcing doing done by the umps. Like y- yesterday could have been completely prevented if the ump just tossed the dude. You know, Jesse Winker still would have been pissed, but he'd be like, okay, he's out of the game. Like, I'm just going to take my pissed ass off down to first base and just be okay with it, you know? But like, he didn't. So he was like, okay, now this guy is saying something to me. I'm going to go and say something to him. And it just kind of unraveled a little bit. Yeah. I just, I think the umps need a little bit more control. But whatever. That was a long intro to talk about the Angels. We're not even talking about that at all. Like I said, we're talking about the probably the one player who wasn't even involved in the broad in any capacity whatsoever. That's Shohei Otani, man. Oh, he had a crazy week this last week. He had an eight RBI performance followed up by a 13K performance. That's I mean, I'm sure it's technically been done by like Babe Ruth or somebody back in the day, but just like it's so unreal that that's a sentence that happened. And we're going to talk about the future with the Angels a little bit. Um, We're going to let this go any direction it it goes. We're just going to kind of talk, banter about it. But just, you know, should the Angels keep him? Should he want out? Should they trade him? Should they extend him? Just anything about Shohai and the Angels, Matt, kick us off. I mean, the Angels should obviously want to keep him. But if I'm him, why why in the hell am I staying with the Angels? Like, Mike Trout made that mistake of staying with the Angels. <laughs> like, yes, Mike Trout is getting paid a lot of money. But where is this Angels team going? Like, re- realistically, where is the Angels team going? Because every single year, they try to do something. Or they don't do something with pitching. And they still can't win. They got off to a good start this year, too, man. They got off to a good start. And then it's just like uh, this team just doesn't know how to put together a a winning roster. I don't know how to win baseball games. And it's like they have Mike Trout, Shohei Otani on the roster. That should be what you need to get (laughs) to get you going, basically. Like, I I don't know. He needs to get out of, of. of the Angels, and I'm not. I refuse to acknowledge them as the Los Angeles Angels because they do not play in Los Angeles. They play in Anaheim, right down the street from where the Anaheim Ducks play. So, how are you going to call yourselves the Los Angeles Angels? Can someone please explain that to me? I don't know. Because I, I sure I don't no. understand it. I, I don't get it. But anyway, that rant is for a different day. But like, he needs to he needs to leave this organization. I know they gave him his his first shot in the big leagues. Just go somewhere else if you want to win, dude. Because you have this talent that could easily be put on a World Series contending team that we would, as fans, would love to see in the playoffs. Yeah. Like, I, I don't care where he goes. Well, I care a little <laughs> bit. I, I don't want him to go, you know, to San Francisco or anything. But why, why not come up the go up the five freeway? Go put put some blue on. You know how cool would that be? I knew I knew I knew you were gonna say that because I mean, he doesn't have the to Dodgers, they have so much. He doesn't have to move. He could he could stay where he is, and he actually gets to play for a winning team that's going to pay him a lot of money. I mean, why? The, the, the DH is in the NL now. Why not? Yeah. Or he could go, you know, to Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> put that foot on the red. He wants to stay with the red. He hey, that, the that's red. the thing, though, too. You brought it up about how, you know, the Angels gave him his first opportunity in the big leagues. And I think a lot of people kind of will, you know, if he does – tend to leave um but it's not like Shohei Otani was some like like nobody the Angels took a risk on and like you know just turned him into what he is he this was who he was the Angels just yeah. won the sweepstakes per se yeah. like he had I mean it's so surprising to me it was a little bit he picked them over a lot of the other teams I don't even remember anybody in in the sweepstakes at near the end of it but I mean at the, at the end of the day, I mean, like it's the LA vibes, you know. Like I can totally understand it from his perspective. You had Mike Trout, like, you know, they they kind of looked like they were trying to do things. I mean, they brought in Pujols. Uh, the Kobe. Angels, the Angels beat out the Mariners, Padres, Dodgers, Giants, Rangers, and Cubs to get him. Oh, he could have easily won a World Series on any other of those teams, like the Dodgers, <laughs> Cubs, so. Cubs, Padres, Padres, Giants. Like, like maybe maybe not the Rangers, but. But yeah, like he chose, awesome. he chose arguably the worst place he could have gone. Maybe, maybe he just didn't. Maybe, he, maybe he doesn't want the bright lights. Have you ever thought about maybe. that too? Yeah. Maybe he just wants to play and hope they win. You know. But he has talked before about wanting to win. So if that is the case, he needs to get away from the Angels organization because they consistently make bad moves. They sign players to these long contracts that don't work out it's it's been going on for years at this point like the the angels have had one playoff experience with mike trout on on the roster and they got, and they got swept yeah so 
that should be telling in, in itself. Mike Trout was was dumb enough to stay with the Angels. I don't think Otani should be doing that. Yeah. Too. Van Dyne, what are, what are your opinions? We're going to keep talking about the, about the Angels after, but I want to hear your generic opinions first. So put this in, into perspective. The Angels, in, in the series against the Royals, the Royals, on the first game when he had eight RBIs, he had eight RBIs. They lost that game. They lost it to the, to the Royals, to the Royals. They lost the game, and they were at home. He, they never they led in the game the either, did they? I don't even think they yeah. never led. I know. <laughs> only a team like the Angels would ever do that. And then, of course, he, he pitched at eight scores against that, the same Royals team. The next they did game. lead. They like, did have a lead in the game. For like an inning? <laughs> yeah. For like so a, they blew it. <laughs> See, like the Angels, they don't deserve Shohei Otani, but I really don't see like right now. I don't see. I can't really think of a team right now that would like need him. Like, I mean, you're talking about like how w- w- which teams lost out on him during the sweepstakes: the Padres, Dodgers. Like, they already kind of have their superstars right now, and like with Mookie Betts of course, and then Fernando Tatis and Manny Machado with those with those teams. But like, can't have too many superstars. Yeah, but like, I, I don't think enough all star lineups. Let's go. New new For era of time. baseball. Every team has all stars. Yeah, I, th- I think Otani, like, he's too good to, to that organization. And so is Mike Trout. But Otani, like, with, with a talent like he has that he displays every single year, he's pretty much going to be the next Babe Ruth in the major leagues. And the only difference between him and him, between Babe Ruth and Shoya Otani, Babe Ruth actually had success with the team that won. That won. Otani has not. Like, like Matt said, the Angels have only been to the playoffs once with Mike Trout, and, then, and they got swept. I think – Like, Trout – you're good. Uh, Chop puts up numbers every single yeah. year, that, and they didn't lose. I mean, the problem is, I think Otani should should. I don't know how many years he still left on his deal. I think he should wait it out, maybe test free agency. I think he but has think one year of arbitration left, and then I think he can become a free agent. Yeah. I think at this point, it's a make or break year for the Angels next year. It's not this year. If they get Rick Domac healthy with Trout and Otani, maybe they could go to free agency. I think Otani should. I think if the Angels can't win this year or next year. I think you should move on. Trading him, I don't, I don't think it's worth doing it because it'll be way too much. Do you want to trade for him? See, that's not that I'm necessarily going to disagree, but I think that's kind of where we're going to go into now is what, like, just what happens. Like, if if the the breakup is looming, like, I feel like it's almost just stupid not to trade him. You know, because it's one of those things where, like, yeah, you know. At the end of the day, it comes down to what Otani wants. If he wants to be there, then you know this conversation is just completely useless. Um, but let's like if if the question is even there, like if, if they're not a hundred percent sure he's going to resign. If you're looking at it from just a pure like GM perspective, Shohei Otani is about to hit free agency. You didn't have success with Mike Trout ever. Shohei comes in, you know, you guys have shown the promise, but still, you're gonna have to pay him an absolute shit ton of money, like so much money. It's unreal. So you're going to have Mike Trout's contract. You're going to have Shohei's contract. What can you put around them that you haven't already tried to do that's going to make you a winning baseball team like that you just simply haven't tried? Like they've exhausted a lot of options. They haven't invested in pitching too much. I guess that's the next possibility. But at the end of the day, like I, I just think that the, the, the haul you could get for Shohei Otani would be, on, it'd be like unlike no trade we've ever seen in any American sport ever. Like, it would just be unreal to where I just think it's one of those situations to where you just can't, like, you simply can't pass it up. Because even, like, it's going to, I think it can set you up for more, like, success in general. You're going to have a better team. Because that's the thing with the Angels. They don't have a good team. They have good players. They have Shoya Tani and Mike Trout. But just from a team standpoint, like, they haven't done anything. They not run well either. That's the thing. Well, that, it's not like, you know, they, they're that's making the biggest moves. issue, I guess. I think that's the biggest issue. It's just, they're not run well. I mean, the whole Joe Madden thing. Like, I didn't think they should have signed him to begin with. Yeah, and they screwed um, Brad Osmus. Yeah, they screwed Brad Osmus. Like, like, this has been a team that he was... Like, I don't know. It, the Angels just... They, they like How many times have they made the playoffs in the last, like... Not many. 15 years. Well, they made it They made it in 2014, and, I, and they haven't made it since. I mean, <laughs> yeah, just, right. I mean like... It's like... And, and, and like Logan said, like you're going to have these two massive contracts. Like, I don't know if, if Trout took, took this 14 year deal back in 2018 for the money, or he just wanted to be there. Because right now, if I'm, if I'm Mike Trout, I've got to be just so frustrated and just so mad with, like, the Angels. One time right in now 12 because, years. 
It's like one time and you in have, 12 years, and you have Mike Trout and Shohei, like like Logan was saying. Like, how is Mike Trout still on this team? Let me ask you how is he that? not is he ever, to trade to the Phillies at this point? Is he going to ever win a World Series ever in his career? I mean, it's not with the Angels. Or maybe maybe, maybe it is. Maybe, maybe it's a deep at this somewhere. point, I don't is care he, about a World Series or Mike Trout. I want him to win a playoff game. I do. <laughs> I do. I just want him to win one, I mean, play, one playoff game. One. Go win a playoff game, then we can talk World Series. Because at this point, is is he going to even get to the playoffs? I mean, Shohei Otani was the MVP last year. I saw. And they they didn't even sniff. The Mike Trout was hurt last year. To be fair. Okay. Yeah, he still. was hurt. But still, still though, I get it. <laughs> I get it. Like, like, like that's my whole point. It's like you literally had another MVP on this team after you just won almost every MVP the last five years, and you can't. That's like, that's. Now, it's not like their though. division's all that great. The Astros are the only team in that division that's been good for the last like five years. That's true. That's just like the Mariners haven't been good. The Rangers haven't been good. The Angels are just like, they're walking the on like whatever. They're gonna be walking on that fine line here soon. Like they're gonna be on a super, 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 super risky line. Like if you play the game and you think you can keep Shohei Tani and you let him hit free agency and you lose him, you don't deserve to do anything in the in Major League Baseball ever again. Like it's just that's simply unacceptable. So it's just like I like I just feel like they shouldn't even let it get to that point. And that's what I'm worried about. Like because at the end of the day, if you have Shohei Itani, once in a lifetime kind of guy, you know, at least if he does leave, at least you can say, hey, we got ten good prospects for him or whatever ridiculous amount it would take because it's going to take something really crazy that we haven't seen before you know then you can keep having the Shohei Itani like effect at least in your organization but if you play that risk with him hitting free agency and he just straight up like ah eh, I don't really want to be here anymore like I'm out you're going to be terrible forever I also just want to point out Anthony Rendon still has four years on his deal after this season so that's three, three big deals they're probably still playing Justin Upton and pool holes, and <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like the way this organization has been run has honestly just been the biggest problem. That's why, and they tried. It's not like they haven't switched people. They they, they yeah. changed things. They Nothing just, just worked. Right move. Nothing. Uh, I think Shohei needs to he needs out for his sake, for baseball fans' sake. Go somewhere else. I, I think care. it. I think it makes sense for the Angels a little bit too. Outside of the fact you don't have Shohei Itani, <laughs> like it might piss off your fans. But like from a pure winning standpoint, it might be like for longevity and everything of your organization, it might be best. I mean, look what the Astros did. Like the Astros were awful for a good what, like I want to say seven ish years. Yeah, in the NL Central. They went to the World Series <laughs> they in yeah, they changed. Yeah, two thousand five or so. Like, they were not very good. They were one of the worst teams in the league for a while. And then they slowly built up through the draft and different trades. And then now they're like a powerhouse. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I don't know. The, the same with the Dodgers. Like, the Dodgers drafted well, too, and look what they're doing. Yeah. Granted, they're, they, you know, they're, I feel like the Angels could easily spend what the Dodgers spend. Yeah. Maybe not exactly as much, but, like, close. And that's a, that's a thing with know. the Angels too, bro. They have the allure of, of SoCal. Yeah, if, it's if not you not like they're not in a, a market that isn't desirable. Bro, yeah, if you traded Shohei for all these prospects, you still have Mike Trout and a yeah. crap load of money. Like I just I, I just I don't think they'll do it, but I think it might be the best for everybody a little bit to just send them somewhere else. But here's why. But here's why I, I disagree. Say the Angels do do that and they, they do trade them. What kind of message do you think Mike Trout's gonna get now? Like now you traded away our our second best player basically on the team. Now Mike Trout's left by himself now carrying the team. Like he's not gonna want to be there. I mean, it, 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 like if you're gonna trade Shohei Otani, you're basically gonna say we're we're, we're just gonna rebuild. Mike Trout doesn't want to right team now. like that. Yeah, like at that point, if you're honestly, if you want to rebuild around one of them, Mike Trout. Okay. If you if if you were to ask me right now, should the Angels keep Trout or Otani? I'm taking Otani. You trade Mike Trout. The dude's been injury prone um, for the last what four years or so. He can't stay on the field. He's he's also three years older than Otani. Trade Mike Trout. Rebuild around Otani. Regardless, Otani, they need to move on from one of them. Whoever it is, I think that's probably both, both yeah. of them. For being honest, if well, you really want to win right? from, from, from the pure Angels both. standpoint, I don't expect him to move on from both. So I'm not going to get that either. crazy. <laughs> I don't either, but you know, I, I can I, I can see why they would if they oh, really want yeah. to try to it makes really sense. rebuild. Okay. It's one of those situations where like every scenario you throw at it makes sense, either because it's logically yeah. makes sense or it's so crazy. You're like, yeah, the angels would probably do that. So it's just it's one of those things that like I don't know if we've had a free agency like 
or just I guess kind of like kind of like Aaron Judge right now. I guess a little bit. I mean, nobody's kind of really going to know what's going to happen with Aaron Judge. The Yankees didn't offer him an extension anywhere near what he wanted. Now he's doing what he's doing. Are we going to see kind of the same thing happen with Shohei? I don't know. Well, my thing is like, why didn't the Angels go after Scherzer harder in the in the off season? They just they, like, there must be something about pitching. Noah Syndergaard, but you're willing to pay Noah Syndergaard twenty what what was it like twenty five million? I think it was like twenty two million. million. Why not sign Scherzer to like thirty something a million for for three years? Kind of like with the Mets. Especially how Syndergaard's been so injury prone. He's, he can only pitch. But that's my whole yeah. Years. That's my whole point. Like, yeah. Scherzer yeah. clearly didn't hate his time out in SoCal. Just goes down one freeway and you're there. Now he's the ace of this team. You're building your pitching. Like, I don't know. It's like the Angels throw their money at such weird. Players. That's the last resort the Angels need to like explore is just full on pitching. And I think that's what they should have done forever. You know, after the pools yeah. didn't work, after Upton didn't work, and everybody has said it. Everybody's been screaming it. Um, you know, maybe they go do it at the deadline. There's a couple pitchers out they there. Draft like all pitchers in their yeah. They drafted draft. all pitchers, which is you know good, but like they maybe don't really help you now. So. I don't, I don't know. The Angels need to figure this out sooner rather than later, though. Have conversations with Shohei. If he if he's signaling I may not be here for the long haul, trade him. Same situation with Juan Soto a little bit, too. You know, there's those rumblings. Yeah. Already. Juan Soto, yeah. So, you know. Maybe, 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 he, could, maybe he could straight it. Who knows? Because yeah. that could be something that we got to watch out for, for in, in July. Because that team is not going anywhere. Yeah. There's a lot, lot to watch. And we'll, we'll touch on, you know, the trade deadline stuff here. Probably one of our next few episodes, um, really approaching fast, August 2nd, I believe, maybe not early August nonetheless. Um, we're going to move on from the Angels a little bit. Maybe we'll touch on some more Angels, but we're going to be talking about some All-Stars and not necessarily who's going to start, who's going to be, you know, the top, who's the best of the best. We're going to be talking about some under the radar guys that probably deserve to be All-Stars that probably really won't get in or just people that like having really good years that deserve to be All-Stars or just lesser names that aren't going to get in. Just under the radar players that are having a hell of a year and just deserve to be in the All-Star conversation. We'll go around, talk about each player a little bit. We're just kind of keep going in this loop. Logan, you can start us off. Who's the first one for you? So this is going to be a very strange one, a very different one. That you, a player that you probably don't hear, but this, this is why I'm going to throw this player because I wish that an All-Star team, like like was it NL and AL would have like a, like a bench utility kind of All-Star because this player definitely deserves it. His name is Luis Guillaume. He is... He's he's on the New York Mets and he has been he's not really a power force, he's not really like a power hitter. He is a great defender and he just hits and hits and hits. He's hitting right now in a short in this like small time with the Mets. He's hitting three oh seven that this year. He's just been he's just making so much contact. He's also a great de- defender. He made an excellent play yesterday in, in the game against the Rollins. He made a diving catch. I mean, he's not gonna get it, obviously, but like in 150 at bats, he's got 46 hits. He's 307. He also he's also walked 18 times. He's only given seven runs, but he gets hits when they matter the most. And whenever he plays, but when there's injuries on the net, like like, like with McNeil or Escobar or Francisco Lindor, like he hits, he produces for this team that, that and um he's just part of out the call the bench mob on this Mets team. And whenever he is put in the lineup, he hits. And I think he's one of those under the radar guys that like if he plays more and he has a bit more power, maybe we will talk about him a bit more. But Luis Gourmet, he's had a very under the radar, very nice year. Maybe he will be considered for an All Star game down down the road in his career. But hey, I think he has a chance to be one sooner, sooner, sooner rather than later. I I don't hate it at all. I think I think those kind of that kind of play style is a little bit underrated. Um, I'd love a good utility man. Um, just yeah, the defense a little bit is underrated in All Star voting. Um, obviously contact average isn't the best stat anymore to a lot of people, but it's still impressive nonetheless. But I do think you know, like you said, utility player like that not having a slot in the All Star game does hurt a lot of people and one of those people not not like the sleep or anything but just came to my mind is tommy edmund tommy edmund has played 10 more games at second base than he has shortstop but he's under the shortstop thing right now and if he was a second baseman he, he could easily be the starter but he has pretty much no chance to be the starting shortstop but it's just like one of those things it's just like just vote in the best player is not that you can't have no positions but i think some more the idea of the utility and stuff needs to be not necessarily tweaked a little bit but i do think it's a little bit of an issue that nobody really discusses Matt, who you got? 
Yeah, so my my first one, I guess, is Josh Bell, man, from the from the Nationals. Like he's gonna be a hot target here in a few months. Nobody is talking about him. Nobody is talking about him. Partly because he's on the Nationals, (laughs) but he's hitting three oh eight. 11 home runs, 82 hits, 46 RBIs. Like, he has been one of the better players in the National League, I feel like, and nobody's talking about it. And, you know, the Nationals aren't a very good team, but he's potent in that lineup. He is going to be – He's going to mash the ball. He is going to be a very, very, very hot commodity at the trade deadline. Switch hitting first baseman has power has the average like i said switch hitter he's got a good he's got a decent glove nothing crazy it's first base who cares the nationals are gonna get a decent return for josh bell especially if they can vote him into the all-star game so you know maybe maybe go get him in the all-star game up his up his value a little bit there nationals fans but i don't hate it i like it i think josh bell has been i think i think he's been underrated for a few years now i think it kind of took him a little bit to get his footing but even when he was in pittsburgh he's been a really solid baseball player for a long time and his his peaks are really high and he just seems to be like he's kind of plateaued a little bit and kind of figured out how to stay a little more consistent that's kind of why he's kind of having the all-star year he is a little bit if i, if I had to say now i'll i'll give one i was gonna save him for a little bit but i just i, just, I can't wait anymore man i'm sure you know who i'm gonna talk about but it, as a reds fan it's my justice to just talk about how good brandon jury has been this year for Cincinnati he's, reds he's on my list too it's absolutely unreal He's bound, you know, former first round pick, came up with the Dimebacks, played a little bit with the Mets, Blue Jays, Yankees, everybody. He's been, he's been everywhere. The, the Red signed him to 900K, non roster invite to spring training. And in all, out of all the third basemen in baseball, he has the fourth highest OPS, the fifth highest average, the fourth most homers, seventh in RBIs, third in runs, fourth in slugging percentage. Out of, and that's a loaded position. Jose Ramirez, Manny Machado, Nolan Arenado. He's right there. He's literally behind all those guys in all these major categories. And I know he kind of took him a little bit to find his footing and that maybe it's a one-year thing. But nonetheless, what Brandon Jury is doing this year is totally all-star worthy, in my opinion. Maybe I don't know if he's necessarily going to get in because, like I said, <laughs> third base is a very loaded position. He plays for the Cincinnati the Reds. Did not, I did not pick a player for my team. To start this I, I I wouldn't have I wouldn't have but I just I, I would have felt disserviced Fair. if if I didn't Fair. talk about he, he was on my <laughs> list too so I can't I can't hate it yeah that, that's yeah, my I mean, brand of jury ramble because because he was in the Myers most of the time last year with the Mets and he did hit with the Mets when he when he was yeah he led the, so, he had the highest pinch hitting average last year in the in the league yeah, I, but I just didn't expect him to be like that good. And like you said, he was a non roster invite to spring trading, and he didn't even, he only get 900K, he didn't even get a million dollars in. Yeah. And this is why I want to see like a, a utility player role be, be in the All Star game because, like, 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 like I said about Luis Gourmet, same thing can apply with Brandon Jury. Yeah, he's not like one of those top third basemen in the league, but like he's putting up All Star numbers. So, Absolutely. yeah, this, that's why I, I'm pulling for a utility role. In the All Star game for years to come down the road. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I know it's the Reds. So I like same thing, kind of similar to Josh Bell in a sense. They're on a not very good team, but they're having one hell of a year. And I don't, I don't, I think, I think Josh Bell probably has better odds of getting in. I feel like, um, I don't know, actually probably not. The first base in the NL is also extremely loaded, um, so yeah. it's, that's probably not very good luck for either of them. But yeah. We'll keep it going, Logan. Who's your next one? How how about this player on the Yankees, Jose Trevino? How about yeah. him? Like like is, is is he going? Is he going to get an opportunity? Because I mean, catching catcher is a weak one. Yeah, catcher is a weak one, and the Yankees. Like I was on the fence with the Yankees trading away um Gary Sanchez, but I mean, I think it's working out. I mean, he's only he, he's played a limited action, but he's hitting two seventy. That's not like I mean yeah we're not all the talk, talking about hours we're, we're talking about power but like even though he isn't he he he's, he had hit six home runs he's giving in twenty one RBI so maybe he's not he, he might not get it but Jose Trevino I mean I think I could definitely see him maybe squeezing in he's only hit fifty home runs in a short career he's he's been a backup most of the time he's only been in the league for about four years so maybe give him a shot. For him, for him to be an all-star. He's, he's another one of those players that if you consider his defense, he's gets, you know he looks a lot better than he is too. And I think that's kind of what a lot of catchers are nowadays too. 
Um, but yeah, if people looked at the defensive side of the ball a little more, I think he's an, he's another guy that would really benefit a lot from from that per se. Matt, who you got next? Yeah, so my next guy, I'm going back to the utility man thing a little bit, mm-hmm. but I just have a question for you guys: Do you guys know who's leading the major leagues in batting average this year? Yeah. I was gonna talk about him first when he brought up Luis Guillorme, but I signed away. Yeah. yeah. And in, in number twelve in hits yeah. in in the major leagues. Yeah. Is Luis Arias from the Minnesota Twins. Three forty nine. Hits. Yeah. Three forty nine. Oh. Eighty hits. Like this dude is killing the baseball. And and like he is just he's fun to watch. And like I would love to see him get a shot at an all-star game. I think there's a chance he can get in, realistically. I, I mean, if you're leading the league in average, I think you're going to get some votes just by looking at that. Who had Luis Arias as the lead leader in av- lead, he, league leader in average? He, he's, he's been up like, there the last few years, to be fair. He's been up there, but still. 349 is ridiculous. Points right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, he, he's been killing the baseball and, like, He's a big reason why this Twins team is number is in first place in that AL Central. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's, I mean, he hasn't missed many games. He's been the one like consistent producer. I mean, not even consistent, bro. Unreal producer. Three three fifty. Like, yeah. when when you have guys like Byron Bucks and Sanchez, Ushela, Kepler in your lineup, and you got a guy oh, yeah. getting three fifty clip, like, yep. <sighs> and he hits at the top of the lineup. Yeah, which is, gets over looks. Yeah, he gets on he gets on base. It's, I mean, I feel like he should get in. I don't know if you, I guess the point, I don't know if he will, but like you have Vlad, you have Vlad who will just get in whether his numbers deserve it or not. But outside of him, I don't know, like, am I missing somebody obvious? Like that would be above them in the AL at the first base? um, First first base? Because that's what he's been playing, right? He's been playing first base, right? Yeah, he's been playing first. Maybe Ty yeah. France because France he's hurt he's hurt now. Now. He's hurt now too. So yeah, that opens up. But, but, but okay, Fernando no. Tatis is hurt and he's fifth in shortstop. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm just saying, like Ty France, even if he gets in, he could get in because he's hurt, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, but Ty France, you could make the argument if France weren't hurt, like maybe him. So I think maybe, that's maybe, a good maybe, shot. Maybe Rizzo. Rizzo's yeah, Rizzo been pretty solid as well. Um, okay, I'll, I'll keep I'll keep the the utility man situation rolling a little bit. Just just like I don't know if you guys will know this, but I'm gonna ask you anyway. Just like Mac, Matt did, you guys know who leads the MLB in stolen bases? Yes, I do. I, I, do, I, do, I, yeah. I, I do know that. We just played him over the weekend. Yep, that, he's been a net killer for many years. Dude, John Birdie hitting just under insane. 300, just under 300, 298 with 21 steals. 21 steals. He's not even a starter. He's yeah. Really in for, I think, Joey, for Joey he's, Wendell. He's and, older, too. He is. He's, yeah. he's, he's hitting 291, 21 steals. And I don't know how many games he's played. I'm going to look right now. But it isn't nearly as much as he should be. And I don't know how they keep him out at this point. I mean, it's just been – bro, 21 steals is a lot no matter what. We're not even that deep in – we're not even – and I'm at the All Star break, and dude's got 21 steals and in limited action. Uh, I need to find how many games. He's 32. He, he, he's 32, and he's like pretty much defying. Like, I mean, I guess that's still young for baseball, but like, like but you don't you think you're like you're speedy. Your... You don't think someone who's 30 years old is like speedy, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, which is the crazy part? John Bird. I like that. I like, I, like, I, like, I like that answer there, Logan. He's yeah, 32 years old. Where's his games played? He has 140 at bats on the year, and he has 21 steals. He only—I mean, the power numbers and stuff obviously isn't there, but he gets on a high clip and steals second and third base regularly. And if he continues to get those numbers down the stretch, which I don't know how he wouldn't, you got to find a way to get this guy on the field. If you're stealing 21 bases and 140 at bats, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous steals, steal, bro. Being able to steal a base, I think, has just—it's been greatly underappreciated the last few years in the league. Like, there's been some good base stealers, but, man, it's crazy. Like, it's so important. Like, it's ha- having that ability to swipe a bag, get a runner into scoring position is just, like, unheard of. Like, that's so important of a skill that nobody really does anymore. I know it's becoming more of the, you know, the three true outcomes, to strikeout, walk homer kind of thing. But, man, give me John Birdie all day. Give me Luis Rise just on base, just living on first base, man. I'll take it every day of the week. I don't care. Oh yeah, I don't care. Definitely. Logan, you got another one for us? 
Yeah, um, this was this guy was a former Ned, and he is um done like Guardians now. Uh, Ahmed Rosario, he's um, I mean, I think another base dealer. I wish things were. I wish things worked out with him at the Mets. I, I liked him as a player. I think he was great. But, um, I mean, Ahmed Rosario, I mean, he's he's been playing great since he's been with Cleveland. I mean, last year he had – um he set career highs in our, yeah. with, with RBIs and a, and, and, um, and a bat. He had 11 home runs, 57 RBIs, and 550 at-bats, and he played in 141 games. He's always hurt with the Mets. But this year, I mean, he's still playing at a high level. I mean, yeah, he's only hit two home runs. But he's had 70 base hits and 255 of that's that's a 275 batting average. So I think he's um I, I definitely think that he has a chance to like be one of the best shortstops in the game one day. And like I said, I wish things were over the back worked out with him in New York. But I think right now what he's doing in Cleveland, especially with a loaded short short shortstop on like 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 players in the American League in particular, you got to consider him to be an all star, especially. Not, not a first ballot one, but maybe, maybe like he's like a backup player or whatever. But how about Ahmed Rosario? I also, you know, kind of keeping it there a little bit. Andres Jimenez has been really good for Cleveland too. Same came yeah, came over yeah, in that deal yeah. as well. He kind of deserves a little bit of recognition here as well. That's not my pick, but Matt, who you got? Yeah, I mean, I have a couple. I'll, I'll go with my my favorite one here, CJ Crone. Yeah, this guy yeah. has just been awesome this season I mean, he's hitting 295 17 home runs 53 rbis 84 hits like i love cj crone like, been I, good. I think he is such an underrated player i mean you know he was with the angels for a while and then he went to tampa maybe he and went to was detroit with, for a little bit he was with detroit he went to he was with the twins for a tiny bit i think too but he's found a home in colorado and yeah. you know granted course field is an obviously a hitter's park but he is fit perfectly in that lineup, and I, I just think he deserves an all star shot. Maybe not a starter, but as a backup, I would the, love to see Crone get a are, shot. Are are the non starters picked by coaches, or is that only in basketball? You know, that football. Is a, I I think it's all voting. I feel like I think I think it is too. I I know they have a say in the roster. I think. But I, so. I don't think they um, like, get to like, the, the finals. I'm, I'm going to you know, continue this here a little bit. I'm going to go for their first pitcher we've said. Uh, Dylan Cease, man. Dude's been pretty pretty damn good with the White Sox. He's, he has a 2.56 ERA, which is obviously good. There's some people you know, with much lower ERAs this year. Pitching's been pretty incredible. Uh, but a 2.56 ERA with 121 strikeouts is good for the second most strikeouts in the league, only behind Shane McCallahan, who is also deserving to be mentioned by somebody, but a little bit more of a bigger name, I feel like now. Uh, but yeah, Dylan Cease, the White Sox rotation has not been good this year. He has been fantastic every time. I mean, 121 Ks, man. What him and Shane McCallahan are doing this year is absolutely unreal, by the way. And I just want to point out, C, uh, Dylan Cease shut the Dodgers out through six innings when they played the White Sox. He's been good. Not saying the Dodgers are the best, only thing to look at, but like that's tough to do against that lineup. Yeah, basically. yeah, it is. He, he was awesome. Like, he he had control. The bullpen just blew it. But yep. So tip of the hat there to Dylan Cease. He, he was very good. Absolutely. Logan, you got another one. Yeah, I'm gonna go back to my favorite team. I'm also gonna stay with pitching. He made the All Star team last year. He had a very disappointing second half. But Tom Juan Walker, I mean, he's been pitching pretty, pretty well too. I mean, I I like him. I think he, he's been a great great pick of life. I'm hoping he continues with this success like last year, where he absolutely fell apart. But this year, right now, he's six and two. He has, he has a an ERA just over three. He's um his 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 two his five of his last six starts have all been on the road. Four of them have been wins. I just, I mean, the, the strikeouts are down, but I'm just liking what I'm seeing from Tyler Monk because his last time out against the Marlins, he went six, struck out five. Again, against the Marlins, he struck out nine. He set on 19 in the row at one point. And then he pitched on the road against Anaheim because the Angels on the side of baseball, he had 10 strikeouts. So I think right now for Tywin Walker, you kind of give him another consideration for him to be an all-star. I mean, especially with all the things that that has been through, he's been a huge boost for this rotation because there were a lot of question marks at the beginning of the year if, if he would be able to bounce back and having a very disappointing second half. But so far, he is um, he's I think in my opinion, he has definitely exceeded expectations because he has been pitching a lot better than he has than last year. I like it. He's he's picked it up a lot down the stretch. He's had he's a couple of rough a lot starts over his career because he was awful. 
the first like four years of his of his career with the Diamondbacks. Yeah, with, with like, Seattle. Yeah, well, D D backs. Yeah, dude, D-backs. I'm telling you, like I I was I always got a smile on my face when I saw he was pitching. <laughs> the yeah. <laughs> he was not that, good. That's horrible. Like that's he was horrible. not good. That. <laughs> like that. That's the thing. He's been he's been a lot better with the Mets than, mm. than anywhere else. Keep us going right over there, Matt. I'm gonna keep going with the pitching here. Um, you all know where I'm probably going with this. Get Just the cat man to the All Star game. Tony Gonsolin, we need to talk about him again because this dude, uh, once again, had two more great starts since we were on this show. That one ass start, man. Reds, two homers, first two innings, doesn't count. Not a good yeah, start. Yeah, and then he shut them down the road. Doesn't count. The the doesn't count. Okay, I, don't think, I, don't think, I don't think it's under the radar. I think that, he's under that's where I've walked to find that with him, too. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if he is, though, because people still aren't talking. I think about I think for, he deserves to be mentioned here. I, like, I, don't, I don't hate bringing him up. I do think he's probably the most Same. well i mean he's just having such a good year where it's just a little more known i think when you're doing the things he's doing pitching it's a little more prevalent to be known and being in the on the dodgers that's a big thing too if he was you know if he was pitching for baltimore i don't think people would, would give a shit about him but he's not he's pitching for the dodgers and a banged up rotation being their ace right now for being honest basically i mean he he was really good against the brave last night that he was he still hasn't given up more than two runs in the start did he get the loss yesterday? No. No. I don't remember when he came out. I know they were losing. No, no, no. He he didn't I think it was an it was no decision. Okay. I knew but, he they were losing like, when he came out because he gave up the one run and then they yanked, yanked him and he was yeah. pissed. <laughs> so it's a lot to get him pissed. But yeah. He you know, I just think he like he deserves it. And you know, oh, he definitely. really does. He's had an awesome year. Um but if you don't want to if he's too big of a name, then what about Zach Galen? Yeah, from the Diamondbacks, because he, you know, the Diamondbacks aren't great by any means, but he has been pretty good for the them. Diamondbacks. I mean, have a two, decent little pitching nice staff PRA, over there. They do. I mean, they really do. They're building something out in Arizona. Yeah, another team that's going to play yeah, big Zach factors Galen in the trade deadline. Pretty good. Like he's been pretty good for them. Yeah. Um, I don't I like. Like I don't really like facing him. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it going with the pitching a little bit. Um, Martin Perez with with the Rangers, one nine six ERA man like yeah. that's uh He's on my list too. It's pretty good. <laughs> the Rangers, you know, they haven't they there's their big money signings have been a little. Seager has been all right. Simeon's been picking it up a little bit of the late. John Gray's not good, never was. I don't know why I signed him, but you know Perez has been handling a big workload for them. And one nine six ERA, that's pretty damn good. If you didn't know, it's pretty damn good. What about, what about Joe Barlow for them too? Yeah, they got the Rangers. Like they got a good. They have a decent, it's like decently okay pitching. They need a few. They need like another. They need an ace, like a tr- like they need a starter. Per- Perez is the ace. Obviously, he's one nine six. But yeah. like you don't think you don't say Martin Perez and be like ace. You know they need their big name front line starter or more Martin Perez's. <laughs> you know? You know, call up Arizona and go get your Gallons, your Davies, your, you know, Merrill Kelly's of the world or something. Like, they call need to do Cincinnati, something. Cincinnati, get Luis Castillo down yeah. to Texas. Yeah, it's cool with me. <laughs> uh, I would gladly, gladly do that. Um, any any other uh, players you guys want to throw out here before we hop out of here? Um, sure, I got one more. Yeah. Um, how about um, Jamison Tyon from the Yankees? Yeah. I mean, he might get in. I think he should get in, but he, he had a pretty rough start against the Astros. And it's his last start out on – um. On June twenty third, but um, that was, he's eight and one. I mean, nobody. I mean, nobody felt up saw that coming. He had eight wins all of last year. He was eight and six. So yeah. he's pitching with a three point, pitching with a three point one nine ERA. So I think Tyone. I think he's going to get in. But if he doesn't, I think he deserves. Yeah, it. I mean, everybody in the Yankees bullpen as well, for the most part. I mean, yeah, say Holmes, <laughs> all of them. Yeah, Holmes, King, Logan Gilbert. Nestor Cortez. I was gonna say Logan Gilbert or, earlier too, but I thought he was might have been another one. Was because he was a big I prospect. Don't know if he's too big. If he it was just a big time well. prospect. If you follow baseball like yeah, that, then yeah. you know him. But like, if you don't, not a lot of people pay attention to the Mariners. That's the thing. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's like the anti yeah. Tony Gonsolin. Basically, we didn't even mention Julio Rodriguez. Like, he yeah. might get in though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he. I feel like he's his name's big enough because he's on the rookie of the year radar. So like, I feel like he's big enough. And now. he's second like, in the league Gilbert in steals. Been, dude, Gilbert has been really good. Yep. Like fantastic. He hasn't given Phenomenal. up more than more than four runs. So good. Uh, more than three runs since the beginning of May. Like uh, two four four ERA. Like 
eight and three. Like he's been really good for this Mariners team. Yeah, I agree. Yes, he has, he has indeed. But yeah, that's gonna wrap up today's video. Now we touch on a little bit of everything again. That's kind of what we're gonna keep doing. Like I said, we're gonna have a, a kind of a trade focus show here soon. I don't know if it'll be next episode or not. We got the All Star game coming up. You know, we have the trade deadline. We got a lot of things that are gonna determine how the year ends. Like I said, that's gonna wrap up today's video and we're looking forward to seeing you guys here on the T. Davidson YouTube channel soon.